or how can businesses strategize? Strategize? Yeah. So yeah. That, that feels, it feels right. We got an, another interesting topic that I know you wanted to talk about, Travis. Um, talking about replacing our hardware. When do I replace my computer? And obviously, this is a question that, is, you know, depending on if you're a individual user or if you're a business, you may answer that question a little differently um, or the answer to that question may be different. Um, but I, I know you'll you'll probably kind of touch on on both aspects of that. But to start with, there's probably a few obvious things that you can uh, check for or that you'll notice that'll kind of ring that ring that red light that says, hey, you might need to replace this. What are some of those obvious things that people can look for? Yeah, well, definitely if there's smoke coming out of the back, you know, probably time to go ahead and replace it, uh, you know, if it's not turning on anymore. So, yeah, you're right. There's there's some really obvious stuff. <laughs> it's crashing constantly. Um, or if it has a little, you know, if it has a little cow symbol down on the corner of it. <laughs> if you're, so, yeah, gateway. <laughs> yeah, if you've got an older computer that, like an older computer, it's time. And we'll talk more about, I think, in detail <laughs> what that means, like what is old. But um, yeah, you know, a couple things with regards to the, um, the crashing. You know, obviously, the first thing you want to look at is is it crashing because there's individual components that you need to replace. Um, you know, or do you need to do an operating system reload? But if you've done those things uh, and you're still having issues, then it may just be time to replace the machine wholesale. So I'd say, you know, that's kind of an obvious one. Another obvious thing is, is it not able to keep up anymore? You're trying to run modern, um, you know, apps, uh, different software that you've downloaded or, or games, maybe you're a gamer and you're trying to play certain games and it just doesn't have what it, it, it needs to to play those games. Uh, and it's not just limited to your video card, maybe it's a problem with your CPU, you know, then it's time to uh, go ahead and spend the money and and, and uh, make the upgrade. Uh, but I want to point out too, there's also differences between home machines and work machines. There's slightly different criteria we look at between the two. And there's a different way to put a plan together. But that's, um, you know, that's the gist, that's the easy stuff to look for. Okay. So the <laughs> smoke signals, that's, that's an easy one to see. That's an easy yeah. one to spot. So so now if we're talking about, uh, you know, things are, that are a little less obvious, and, and again, I know that this could be wildly different maybe for a, uh, a, uh, a personal user, your, your own private computer and a work computer, but what are some other things that, uh, that kind of point to uh, it's time to get a new, get some new hardware? Sure. So one, one thing I don't think a lot of, um, you know, people are aware of is that Windows operating systems go end of life, and when they do... Uh, they no longer receive security updates. So for instance, Windows 95, Windows 98, Windows XP, none of those get security updates anymore. They're completely vulnerable to, you know, whatever whatever state the operating system was left in, that's, what, that's it. Uh, Windows 7 is a great example, right? There's still a lot of people out there using Windows 7. It is no longer supported by Microsoft. It's end of life. Uh, if there's a vulnerability that's discovered with the operating system and... Um, uh, you know, you're, it exposes you to an attack. There's no, there's no help coming, right? There's no fix for that. You're just going to be vulnerable to it. Now, maybe your physical hardware is new enough that you can put a more modern operating system on it. However, in 20, where are we? 2021, December of 2021, that's not likely to be the case anymore. If you've got a Windows 7 machine, uh, trying to upgrade that to Windows 10, Windows 11 is out now. So we're we're starting to make some we're we're getting some real distance between Windows Seven machines and what's appropriate now. So that's a great reason to say, hey, it's probably time. Let's go ahead and invest and get some more modern hardware. Some of these uh, operating systems, like Windows Eleven, have specific hardware requirements that your machine probably, if it's if it's you know let's say seven eight years old, it, it's not going to be compatible with TPM. Uh, is one of these things that is a requirement for Windows 11, TPM 2.0 specifically, which we don't have to get into the muck on what that is, but it's a it's a chip that's on the motherboard that helps um, with encryption for BitLocker, which is a type of encryption built into Windows. That's a requirement for Windows 11. If you've got an older machine, the likelihood that you actually have that hardware 
installed on your motherboard is, you know, it's not very, it's not very likely. And it's not something that it, you really want to add after the fact, you know, it's, it needs to be on the motherboard. So um, that's what, one of the things that's going to require you to go ahead and make the upgrade and get to something more modern. And again, that's less obvious. So now if you're a, if you're an individual user, um, those are some things that you might, you might spot, but if you are, if you're running a business, then what are, what are some other things that may, that you may want to look for, um, that you may want to set up an alert for, or maybe someone that you're working with has set up an alert for you. What are, what are some things that business owners or, or companies may be looking for? Sure. So I'd say it's even more important if you're a business owner to make sure that you're running a modern operating system that's still supported, right? Because, you know, this is how you make your living. Um, you've got your data, you've got customers data that you're trying to protect. So you want to make sure even more so that in that case, you're running supported operating systems. But in addition to that, warranties are another thing. Uh, you know, if you're actually buying business grade uh, computers for your company, they're going to come with three-year and five-year warranties. When those warranties expire, then you want to start looking at replacing those machines because most of the time in a business, there's specific requirements for what your hardware is. For instance, you don't want to have a home operating system on your computer if you're in a business. You want to have a pro operating system so that you can join it to a domain or there's other features like remote desktop, other things that you may need in the pro operating system that are not available, it's not available in the home operating system. So just going down to Best Buy or Costco or wherever and buying a computer, they don't usually have pro operating systems already installed on those computers. So if you go down there and buy one of those computers, you're gonna to have to upgrade it to pro. So there's an additional cost you didn't anticipate. And the warranties that come on those computers are usually one uh, year warranties and they're mail-in warranties. So you actually have to give the machine back and wait for them to fix it and you're out your computer until it comes back. So that's why what we do is uh, we, we talk to customers all the time about setting up lifecycle management and creating a schedule where they can anticipate their needs in advance and actually rotate through their hardware proactively on a schedule. It allows them to budget for it and to be prepared for what's coming before they have some sort of meltdown, their computer explodes and then they're out of warranty and now they're scrambling to find the right solution at the right price. Yeah, because we're talking about <laughs> we're talking about loss of money, you know. <laughs> I know you mentioned that exactly. Like, if if it's a personal user, you know, you may not be able to 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 get on, you know, to to check out those YouTube videos or or the latest TikTok. But if it's your business computer, right, that's a that's a whole whole nother deal, right? Right. That's so when you have those mail in warranties. If it's a home computer you, and you lose that machine for two, three weeks while they fix it, and like you said, you're not able to watch YouTube or or maybe play video games, hey, you can probably survive, right? You know, start riding your bike, get outdoors, you know, do something different for a few <laughs> weeks, probably, right? That's, you know, maybe maybe you are that it, you need it that much personally too. But if it's for your business, that's how you make your, your living, right? That's how you communicate with customers. That's how you pay invoices. That's how you do everything these days. And the problem like right now in, in just again, December of 2021, there's this major chip shortage and trying to get the machine you want can take months, especially laptops. And if they're customized laptops, right? We have specific things you want in the laptop. Literally we're looking from like Dell at sometimes two, even three month uh, delays. So it puts you in this um, difficult situation where if you didn't plan for replacing these machines and you have a failure, now, you, you know, you don't have a warranty. Now you're scrambling to find the right thing and you wind up going someplace you shouldn't go, buying some computer that's really not made for what you're going to be doing. It's it's not up to the quality and standards you need for your company. It's got the wrong operating system on it. It's got bloatware in a lot of cases, like the different pieces of software they've installed on it that you don't need in your company. Um, and you paid probably a premium for it, or you didn't pay anything for it because it's not a really nice computer. And then it's just going to fail in a year or two because they're not made for what you're doing. So it just, you don't want to run the computer until it dies. What you want to do is have a strategy. We recommend five years is when you start looking at replacing your machine. 
And, and the reason for that is you can extend your warranty with Dell out to five years. But after that five-year mark, you're no longer covered. And at five years, there's been enough changes in operating systems and in hardware and hardware requirements and software uh, and enough wear and tear on the machine that now you're getting into that danger zone where it could start to break down, it could fail, uh, and you're not benefiting from all the new stuff that's that's come out. So at about five years, we tell our customers, hey, here's the machines this year that you should budget for replacing. And again, that allows them to, to budget, to get that money prepared in advance, talk to their board of directors or investors or whoever they need to talk to, and actually allocate those funds and set them aside. If you're waiting until your computers just explode, now you're asking for money you don't have maybe because you put it elsewhere, right? You've dedicated it to other things and you're doing it at the last minute. You're buying the wrong thing. You're paying too much. So let's talk about, let's talk about the, the planning process for businesses. Again, if you're, if you're a, an individual user, maybe you can't just buy a computer and use it until it doesn't, it doesn't work if you're not worried about security or if it's just for entertainment and um, you know, if it's not something that you're actually budgeting for, um, but for a business, how can businesses um, plan um, and what kind of strategy can, or how can businesses strategize, strategize? Yeah. So yeah. That, that feels, it feels right. How yeah. can they strategize on how to, uh, on how to, address these issues before they come up and blow up in their face. And then they run into, you know, scrambling to get something that doesn't really fit their needs. Yeah, the easy way, right. is just to start a spreadsheet. Here's when we purchased the uh, computer. Here's the serial number of that computer and the manufacturer and the warranty effective date and the end date of the warranty. And you can just track it that way and do basic lifecycle management. There's other dedicated lifecycle management tools that are out there as well that you might need for your organization for tracking other things, you know, that can help you track not just um, computers, but maybe also help you track furniture and stuff like that as well. We use a tool called ScalePad. That's uh, it used to be called Warranty Master. And it integrates with some of the tools that we, some of the other tools we use, and it collects this data automatically. It generates a report. We send the report out monthly to our customers, uh, or we can do it less if they want it less, but it goes out usually monthly. So they just have a monthly kind of snapshot of where they're at. It tells them how many computers they have, or like workstations, how many servers. How, it even gives uh, warranty information and, and uh, inventory information on switches routers, access points, things like that. So networking equipment. So they get a nice snapshot printers. They get a nice snapshot of here's all my inventory and here's how old it is. And then it helps, you know, helps us and helps them plan for this because it lets us know this stuff's about to go out of warranty and this stuff is out of warranty. And so then we're able to cycle through the hardware based on warranty and age. So it sounds like um, a, a, a business could... Potentially, they could either, you know, track it themselves using spreadsheet, they could download some kind of a software, or they could have somebody that they're working with, you know, an IT provider who's who helps uh, track that, track that for exactly. Them. Yeah. Awesome. So maybe you're already working with somebody who does this. And it's, you know, if you do have an information technology person who's helping, maybe it's a company or maybe it's a dedicated person, definitely, if you're a business owner, go talk to them and say, hey, how are we handling lifecycle management? What is our strategy? You know, when do we plan on uh, replacing these things? What makes sense for us? Some some organizations replace their workstations on a three-year cadence, which is really aggressive. Um, you know, it's expensive too, but it's if you really just need some pretty cutting-edge technology, then yeah, three years is good. You know, five years is more common. Uh, I've definitely seen people, unfortunately, a lot of people who just say, we'll just wait until it explodes. And then when they do, they're, they're, they wish they didn't uh, generally. So that, that kind of brings us to the summary portion of this. Uh, let's make IT simple. 30 sure. seconds or less, Travis, when do I replace my computer? When it's, when it's too slow, when it can't support modern operating systems and modern um, software, if it's no longer under warranty, okay? And if it's uh, reducing uh, productivity because of just the way it's behaving, it's actually cutting into the profitability of your company, it's time. Uh, probably look at around five, five years, right? That's probably where you should start thinking about replacing your computer.